Hey guys, welcome to Voc Rehab Bootcamp. I am Nick the Vet. And today we're going to talk about the most um, difficult to obtain track, and that is ILP. There's not really a lot of information out there. That's because it's so dope. They don't want you to know about it, but I'm going to share it with you. ILP is a track whereby if you go and you apply for Voc Rehab services and you are not really physically or mentally um, capable of having any kind of success in any of the other four tracks, but you are entitled to Voc Rehab services, they're supposed to um, open an evaluation for you to get ILP. There's kind of nine basic items and they are short-term training or certificate completion. That's pretty self-explanatory. You get a subsistence allowance while you are training. Um, that's BAH or a stipend. Um, you can get RFL. Um, I've got a video on RFL, but it's a, a revolving fund loan, uh, interest-free, but check it out if you need it. Um, they can give you assistive technology, uh, uh, an assistive technology assessment, which means they'll assess to see if you need assistive technology. Some people have hearing challenges. Um, maybe you can get Alexa throughout the house and get all of your outlets changed and your light bulbs changed for Alexa. So you, you know, maybe you're blind, maybe you can speak to everything and you don't have to, you know, fumble around looking for things. They, they have the money to get you technology that assists you based on, you know, what your service connected disabilities are. You can also get uh, medical mental health services, obviously as a 100% service connected veteran, all of you are getting that, but not everybody who's in voc rehab is 100%. So you can get those services. Identifying appropriate housing accommodations. That's a good one. That means let's say hypothetically you're in a wheelchair and all of your counters are up here. And when you wash dishes, you've got to wash like that. You can get all your counters lowered coordination with community-based resources and you know they'll hook you up with people in the community in the community who have programs that can help you based on your service connected disability based on what you need after the assessment equipment to increase independence in activities now that seems broad and really nondescript but those are things like let's say you have a um, shower that is uh, builder grade, you know, has that big plastic thing, it's slippery, you know, the one that's stuck to the wall and has the indentation for soap or whatever. You can get your whole shower redone. You can get shower rails put in. You can get that chair lift that goes up, you know, you just sit on it to go upstairs, that thing. I think I said nine things in the beginning, but I'm showing eight. So um, here's the guideline for you to go to check that out to see if these are some, th some things that you may need. Oh, there's a limitation where um, Congress limits 2,700 new cases every single year. That's why you don't really see them advertising it because it's limited. Now, here's what happens. Because it's only 2,700 new cases per year that's allowed per Congress, they let the BRNE office know when they're reaching that threshold. So if they try to say, no, we're too close, you can ask them, what number are we up to? Because my attitude is if you can do 2,700, we're at 2,600, but I meet the criteria because I've got an SCH and all the other tracks are infeasible. Why can't I have a slot? So if they come back and say no, because we're saving it for the most seriously handicapped, you can't do that. You know, it's almost discriminatory. You know, you can't just decide we're going to hold it for somebody else. So if, those, if that happens to you and the VRC says that, my suggestion is to escalate. And if you live in a one party consent state, maybe record it but only if you live in a one party consent state. And then that way you can escalate up the chain and get what you want. For people who have an employment handicap or a serious employment handicap, and for ILP, you have to have a serious employment handicap. And again, a serious employment handicap does not mean you're seriously handicapped. It means you meet the nine criteria for having a serious employment handicap. But if you don't meet all nine, you can still have a serious employment handicap if you have extenuating circumstances. But if you do have all nine, you definitely have an SCH and you should be eligible for ILP if you cannot, if it's not feasible for you to have success with the other four tracks. You can explain for yourself why it's infeasible for you to um, be given any track other than ILP. And they may try to push you and say, no, I think you can work. But if you're IU, if you're IU with an SCH, then you really, there should be no reason that you do not get ILP. So all of you who are IU and cannot work in on Social Security, I'm telling you, here's the thing. Now, you can get things like, I know of a gentleman, I think I posted it in one of the uh, Facebook groups, the 100% group, he got a greenhouse. Um, and I know another gentleman who got a woodshed and got equipment. Some people that have been trying to get 
um, certain things through the VHA side uh, from their doctor, like sleep number beds. I'm not saying you can get a sleep number bed. I've never had anybody ask for one, but if you have a super bad back and um, you can't sleep and you've got insomnia because of the pain or whatever, I would certainly ask for one if I were in that situation. The guidelines don't say you can't have it. Everything within the guidelines suggests you can get what you need in order to make your life better. And if you're sleeping in a chair every night because you are, you know, your back is, is contorted, then you should definitely ask for something like that. So basically, um, as a, again, a quick overview, ILP um, is one of the tracks for, for voc rehab. If you have a serious employment handicap and all the other jobs, all the other tracks are infeasible, you need to ask for ILP. They will come out to your home, they'll do an assessment, then they will put together a plan. Um, and while they're doing that development, you'll be put in INT status, which is interrupted. While they're doing it, you're not technically in the program, it's in a kind of holding pattern while they're doing all their reviews and checking out your house and all that. Um, if you wanna look at the cost approvals based on the types of things you'll need, here's the guideline for that. Um, here's the guideline that says how they govern ILPs. Once you finish the program, let's say hypothetically they installed cabinets or you know redid your bathroom or whatever, or built you a greenhouse or built you a, a bee, beehive situation, whatever that's called. <laughs> um, once you've been in that situation for 60 days, they consider you as uh, maintaining a level of independence and the, the program will end. One thing I do want to tell you, it took, after my film equipment was approved, not the 10,000 one, the $25,000 one, it took, I believe, four months for it to go up where it needed to go and for them to order it and send it to me. So these things are going to take a minute. If you're, you know, if you're IU, you got time. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to be working anyway. I would just try it. If it takes six months or a year, that's fine. The thing that I would suggest is that if you get a counselor and uh, they come out and they do an assessment and then it takes more than 30 days, you should hear from your counselor at least every 30 days in this process. I would suggest you go to video number 22 if you're not hearing from your counselor to follow up. Um, once you've been found entitled, once you've been put in the program, the first step is the assessment. Let them come out to your home. Then you have to put a plan together. What are we going to do? What are we going to change? What are we going to build? What are we going to buy you? What are you going to be doing? Um, do I need training for it? Bottom line, you need an SCH and you, it needs to be infeasible for you to be on any other track. And if that is the case, they have to review you for ILP. They don't have to approve it, but they have to at least review you and do an evaluation. They come out to your home, they do an evaluation, um, look at what you may need, all the all the things that you, you maybe can do, want to do, if it's feasible. If they try to take you down a path you don't want to go down within ILP, you can always escalate. Um, one thing that they do sometimes is they say, no, I'm denying it. If you don't like it, you can appeal, which is bull crap. No, you use your chain of command. Um, don't, don't ever appeal. I, I don't think there's any reason to ever appeal in book rehab. It's just not necessary. Um, but anyway, hopefully that's a good explanation, a better explanation of ILP. Um, again, it's not about working. It's not about money. It's about independence, making sure you can get around in your home. You can do things on your property. You can enjoy life and, and participate in life a little bit instead of just being severely handicapped and just being there looking at television. They don't want that. Hope that all makes sense. I hope it's more clear. If you're IU or, um, you know, you fit that category. Um, check out video number uh, 16. Start at 6 minutes, 31 seconds. See how many of the SEH criteria you meet. If you don't meet all of them and you want to know how you can make it work, give me a call. Some people meet some criteria and don't know they meet it. So just not give me a call. Go to my Facebook group <laughs> and you know let me know which one. Or you can private message me at Facebook or you can email me. Okay? Go get your um, entitlement and your ILP and get started living your life. Thanks for watching. I'm Nick the Vet.